Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. In this video, we will contrast the relationships between Streptorhini and Haplorhini and the position of various fossil Eocene primates in each group. All right, grab your nose. And you likely notice that unlike cats and dogs, we humans have a dry nose, which differs from the majority of mammals. Most mammals have a wet rhinarium or fleshy nose that's kept moist, uh, sometimes by licking it or it's just the wet snot coming out of the nostrils. And this moist nose helps to capture chemo sense in the air. And humans and a large group of primates have lost a wet nose. They've reduced the ability to smell really well. And this is why cats and dogs can smell things that we can't. They have a bigger, more developed olfactory system. So primates can be grouped into two major groups. Those with a wet rhinarium, called the Streptorhini, and those with dry noses, called Haplorhini. The Streptorhini includes a diverse group of lemurs and lorises that exhibit wet noses and a greater reliance on smell. The haplorhini includes monkeys, apes, and humans, as well as a weird group of primates with a deep fossil record called tarsiers. Tarsiers, or as Zay Frank says, tarsays, are insect-eating primates with giant bugged-out eyeballs. They are, their eyeballs are larger than their brains, and today they live in southeastern Asia and Indonesia, but they have a fossil record in North America, Europe, Asia, Africa, and even possibly South America that goes back to the Eocene. They have dry noses and hence are placed within the Haplorhini group with us, with humans. Now the Streptorhini and Haplorhini split is not the only way to divide up primates. An older fashion sort of way was to place the tarsiers with lemurs in a group called prosimii, and the monkeys, apes, and humans in a group called the anthropoididae. The anthropoids uh, can be considered a more inclusive branch or a clade of haplorhini, and so we can use it to define a family that we belong to. During the Eocene, eu-primates, or the true primates, were divided into two common families, the adipoids and the omomyids. The adipoids had long snouts, and there's some morpho morphology of the skull to suggest that they had a wet rhinarium, uh, or wet rhinarium primates, and hence were members of the Streptorhini. The omomyid had a reduced nose and belonged with the Haplorhini, and are likely ancestral to living tarsiers. They featured enlarged eyes as well and were likely nocturnal, while the adipoids were diurnal and likely resembled modern lemurs. Some of the better known Eocene adipoids is Northarctus and Smilodectes from Wyoming both well represented by skeletons in the Middle Eocene Bridger Formation. Also from the same rock units are the Omomyids, Omomys and Tetonius, are also known from the Eocene. In Asia, uh, the nearly complete skeleton of Archaeocebus is about uh, 10 centimeters long. It also belongs within the Omomyids. Adipoids and Omomyids were not the only group of eu-primates living during the Eocene. Ancestors of anthropoids are also known from fossils from China called Eosimias, or the Eosimiids, which are found in limestone crass deposits that date to the Middle Eocene. More widely recognized anthropoids are known in Africa at the very end of the Eocene. However, Eosimiids, which are known from jaws and ankle bones, are believed to represent an early origin for the anthropoid group in the Middle Eocene. 
One of the more difficult to place primates from the Eocene is Runia, uh, a primate from the later Eocene of Texas, and one of the rare late Eocene primates from North America. It has features of both anthropoids, omomyids, and possibly adapids. Now, most people believe that it's a well-derived omomyid that became larger and more diurnal, although the fossil hints at a Eocene Central American primate fauna uh, during the Eocene, which has not been well sampled. Primates in North America began to decline during the Eocene, with most groups vanishing during the late Eocene, with later occurrences in more tropical southern locations. The Eocene Oligocene boundary is a major cooldown of the global climate. And primates nearly vanished from North America and in Europe after the Eocene Oligocene boundary. Primates mostly disappeared and are known only from the south during the Oligocene and Miocene near the warmer Mediterranean climates of places like Turkey and Spain. In the next video, we'll look at the diversity of living Strepturini primates and their possible origin from the adipoid primates living during the Eocene. For now, be sure you can contrast the relationship between Strepturini and Haplorhini and the position of various fossil Eocene primates in each group, the adipoids, omomyids, and eosimiids. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Utah State University geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website, benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.